Clean Why are you, what are you excited about? John, you're, you're going crazy about your internet speeds and you had something to do with it? Well, I had everything to do with it. What did you do? I, uh, now it's at eight, well, it's at, oh, it's at eight for a second. I turned it off and I turned it back on. My internet <laughs> speeds went from 33 to almost 180. Did I'm you like, do something? Like, did you change something or why I are you? I just told you what I did. Technical wizardry. You go in and unplug the thing and then you plug the thing back in. The thing. The difference, yeah. The, what do they call that? A router? <laughs> I believe the modem, maybe, or the. Yeah, that's whatever you. Call Roto it. router? Is that I what you're? That. Yeah, you know the thing under the by the goes on the wall. <clears throat> I want to say this too. I'm so glad I finally caught Megan bringing you the drink during the show <laughs> last week. This oh, last week. Yeah, yeah. Last week, yeah. Yeah, she hides. She'll bring another one if you're interested. Does she? Does she come around the side or what's? How, um, if you see my eyes go to the right, I'm texting her my order. Oh, I see. okay. I, I think I really like texting my order. <laughs> oh, okay. So it looks like, uh, looks like we got Ed Milet coming up this week. Uh, we're supposed to record with him. I'm still talking to Harlan Coben, uh, the creator of The St Stranger, also the author of The Stranger. Uh, those are possibilities. Scott, uh, you have any uh, technical wizardry that you've been taking care of? And <laughs> looks like you've been eating zag nuts or something. What you... No, I'm good. You're you're all right. You gotta you don't yeah. have to do a you don't have to do an Oreo clear or anything. Oh no, but that was fun. That sketch. <laughs> oh yeah, so uh, that was a great that the, the Kuiper. That was one of the best things you've ever I think put together. Um, it was one of those moments where the first, I, I kept texting you things like, I need something to do with this. And you kept texting me, how about this and this and this? And I was like, no, I don't, and none of that. Just can, can write, we some get it? Kuiper, can, write some Kuiperisms with these snacks. Yeah, can we get into what it's like to create with Frank? You basically, <laughs> you spitball something and it's not like, that's ah, not quite what, it's like, no, what do you, no, that's not what I want. This is what I want, but you do that because I'll spitball the three things you don't like, and then you have to tell me exactly what I, you want, and then usually I can produce. So no, because I said I, what I said was I guess these snacks with Kuiperism uh, vernacular, and he goes, well, how about he's in a closet uh, smoking <laughs> uh, a joint with a broken elbow? I'm like, no, no, no. Well, how about uh, he's, pretty good? Uh, I didn't. Think that. I like that one. That was interesting. Yes. Yeah, for, for me, Scott, it's usually a thing where he says, if you come up with anything, let me know. And then I will fire a couple things over, and then he goes, I'll try it. <laughs> <laughs> well, half the things, the half the things John comes up with are things that are going to not just get kick me kicked off of That's the planet. True. It's, it's, <laughs> it's Thanos snapping his fingers. That's how. <laughs> it's comedy <laughs> Thanos. Yeah. I am yeah. inevitable. Um, so I want to go back a couple things because we haven't uh, met as uh, just local heroes together for a little bit. Um, the Dennis Miller episode, I'm still uh, having fun thinking about that. Found out there's Megan in the background. She'll be great on YouTube. Uh, it might get us some views. The skimpier the clothing, wow. the more views we'll get. Um, Rip those tits out, sister. We're struggling. <laughs> Somebody got a screenshot of our tits. Did you hear about this? No. Oh, when we did the thing for Bobby, the Bobby Lee. Lee. Well, that episode, okay, Thank so you. we're on YouTube now. I want to let people know that we're on YouTube, first of all. We've started putting the episodes up. We might go to Patreon eventually. Uh, I don't know, but for right now, it's on YouTube. Bobby Lee is the biggest drawer of YouTube viewers. I mentioned it slightly on some social media. And there are thousands of views already on his when Dennis Miller has about 500 so far. <laughs> um, and Bobby Lee, uh, I mean, I, 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 he's just a draw. It's unbelievable. Cause I, I just think back to the days at, at Mad TV when nobody even knew who he was. It's amazing how you, I also remember Tosh opening up for me at a corporate show in Denver. So that's, uh, <laughs> those are those moments I'm like, hey, keep, yeah, keep seeing those mean things with that smile, kid. I think you got a chance. <laughs> I'll keep doing my John Mad. Hey, there's a guy looking in the rearview mirror. <laughs> so uh, the, the, the way to get to the YouTube channel is Frank Caliendo, D-O-T-C-O-M. It's my original YouTube channel that has the 
Bush versus Clinton um, comparison on it and stuff like that. But we now are up every week on YouTube with the full video, which people love to see man boobs, apparently. Did you know this, John? Did you know we were on YouTube? This, no. I didn't no, either. I, I, I wouldn't have signed up for this. Well, we've really just experimenting. We started experimenting with it, and that's kind of why it is. But it's it's helpful to get the whole thing going, and I'm I'm making almost a a fraction of a nickel. No, there's no money being made yet, but I will eventually <laughs> cut you guys. Okay, out. speaking of money, though, um, I saw Ric Flair selling cameo greetings for five hundred bucks a piece. Have you thought of this, Frank? Have you done? I'm I sure think cameo is the word. I, I'm. I just don't like it. I feel it feels the most embarrassing thing. Like you just said, Ric Flair is doing cameos for 500 bucks a piece. Doesn't I mean, it I feel like, like you're like, it's a person desperate for me. It's like a garage sale of entertainment. It feels so. <laughs> I, I, that's, I, I mean, okay. So I put it up, I put mine up there for like four or 500 bucks. I had corporations, which I get paid tons of money to do. <laughs> they were all coming to me going, Hey, you're only doing it for 500 bucks. Why are we yeah. paying thousands? I'm like, off a cameo immediately. Like I had five within a week where they're trying to get me to do advertising. And cameos like for fans. But then you're gouging the fans for that True. much money in the first place. So to me, it's this weird, you know, Norm MacDonald does it for like 500 bucks. And his are like three minutes of, you know, so I was uh, just uh, <laughs> on the toilet there. You ever been on the toilet? You know, you're just <laughs> crapping, you know, while you're. It's kind of like John on the Caliendo cast, you know? <laughs> Funny his name's John, because he's always in the John. I just look at it, I look at it in such a, um, I don't know, it's such a sad thing for someone to say, uh, I'll talk to you for $50. Like, you would never do that with anyone else. Like, hey, that guy's kind of, I, I think I want to get something like that. Give me $50 and we'll have a conversation. Or maybe I'll come over to your table and say, happy birthday to your friend. But this, this feels seedy and weird. And we're not that far removed from people losing their minds when baseball players and stuff started to charge for autographs. And it jumped from that to like, now I'll talk to you for $1,000. I like, also oh, feel, John, that it's a terrible time. Like it's got, it, when, right now, when people can't pay for anything at all, right. And to go put that stuff on there <laughs> and try and, and I'd originally, when I first put it up, I was thinking about helping pay for the podcast that way. And I almost advertised it that way. And I was like, I don't know. I'm just going to lie to everybody and say, I'm not making anything on him. So it's the selling plasma of comedy. <laughs> In a garage sale. <laughs> In a garage sale. I mean, uh, Johnny, you're coming up with billions of them. I want to go on a ranch here, babe, but I feel like I'm selling my soul. I think you just yeah, I double ized. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Uh, Which I, sounds I, like, like a Scott Long reference when you think about it. <laughs> I don't. PT boy just double ized all I over. Right yeah. You already got Peter yeah, North in the five first five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't have the desire. I'm not at a level where people would ask me to do anything. My price would be so pathetic that I might as well just blow a guy instead. <laughs> I don't think so. I actually think you have more passionate fans than yeah. I do. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Way more passionate. Than I, I might, it's local. It's local. Doesn't matter. More yeah, people doesn't. might know about me, but more people care about you. There's a, <laughs> I don't think that's true. Th there's a reality. <laughs> Yo, no, you could do, but here's the difference. You could charge something and people are like, okay, he's, he's a celebrity. If I started to do that, they'd be like, who does he think he is? Even people who care or like me would be no, like, see, that's no, I don't think so. Here's where you, you haven't looked at Cameo. A, a Cameo is full of people like, who does he think he is? That's Charging $9. Like people, like literally <laughs> $9 for them. Uh, I'm Mark. Some, and I once that. appeared on the Smurfs <laughs> as a <laughs> mushroom house cleaner. See, now that's what I would pay to send to you guys. I'd, like on Scott's birthday or your birthday, I would get a guy who was like the like Gargamel's <laughs> guard in the Smurf, and he'd charge an eight bucks. I'm like, look at this pathetic bastard. I have to send this to everybody. Asriel, yeah. here so you like, go. 30, 36 bucks, I cover about seven birthdays. Is it comic book like conventions though and superhero Ooh. conventions very similar? Uh, I think oh. there is something that goes with it. No, but that's people signing for autographs. I don't sign. For, I don't do any autographs and stuff there. First of all, they don't know who I am. 
I, uh, when I was there. No, I'm not talking about you. I'm saying, isn't it our version if you're a comedian kind of as comic book store or uh, if you're an actor that's not in superhero shows? It's the used car lot of comedy. Yeah, no, it, it is, but they're very similar. That's why. Hold on a second, Scotty. I think Randy West just triple his on the situation. <laughs> I mean, Billy, you got to stop me. I'll do it again. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I just, the cameo, thing, and I've heard like people tell me, and I don't know because obviously I don't get a chance to hear it, but Stern's group, like all of his misfits and stuff, oh. make a killing on that thing. Like there's, yep. there's idiots from his whack pack that are making like six, seven hundred bucks a pop. And sure, Gilbert Godfrey that. makes tons of money on it. Gilbert but Godfrey, I, I just that. stole the ketchup from this restaurant, but I'm also getting 45 bucks a pop. I understand it's your birthday, and I wanted to say hello. But uh, I also understand you're Japanese, and you're probably still glowing from that nuclear thing that happened a few years ago. Happy birthday! <laughs> I can't do the insurance ads anymore. Would, he would be the worst. I couldn't imagine the things that he would say to people. Oh. Hi, it's Gilbert. I fucked your mom. I might be your dad. I don't know the timeline. Happy birthday! <laughs> I just broke the space-time continuum, triple ising. I don't know, my wife is in the room right now. She doesn't know anything about this entire deal. But keep in mind once your dad blew me for $12. Have a wonderful anniversary. <laughs> I, just, I think Gilbert would just, he'd set you up with this. I would pay for Gilbert. There's a few people where it fits. Like I go to Gilbert's garage sale of comedy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I'd rather watch that than actually an hour of his stand-up, personally. I'd rather mm -hmm. have a minute of him than an hour. I, I, I fell in I love with him. In, 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 in one interview, I've always liked Gilbert Gottfried, but I fell in love with him in an interview because he's, he's like a, um, I don't know, he just, like, you, like you need to coddle him. He almost feels fragile. Oh, no, I like him in an interview. I just don't like, yeah. I don't want to sit and watch him for more than like 20 minutes. There's, there's a lot of stand-ups that I think are brilliant for five or 10 or 20 right. minutes. And, but then they just wear me out. You know what I call Frank, that? Frank can hear you. I, I, can't, I call that me. No, the Wendy Liebman effect. Oh yeah. Like, Wendy Liebman for five to 10 minutes is Crusher. maybe the most brilliant person in the world, but that throwing lines away after about five to 10 minutes just feels like the same uh, kind of uh, thing over and over and over. So it doesn't Jeremy surprise Hots? you anymore. Jeremy Hotz? Is he yeah, not around yeah. anymore? What's that? Is he not around anymore? I can well, I, I haven't seen him anywhere, but I mean, he's from Canada. I think he does a lot in Canada, but I haven't seen, but he was really funny and he had that kind of side out of your mouth thing. Yeah. Uh, and it was really funny, but I can't imagine listening to that for an hour. I'll tell you, Pablo would wear me out after 30 minutes. For 30 no, minutes, it was cocaine. incredible. <laughs> but yeah, but then, but Scotty, <laughs> but, 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 oh boy, am I get, get ready. But, 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 but. <laughs> there was a stretch, there was a stretch where one uh, club owner who owned, who booked a few clubs would book me with him because oh, he was never sure that Pablo would show up. So I'd be there in case, somebody needed to do an hour and 10 out of the feature spot, or maybe he'd show up late and I could do a little extra, but then he would crush. I mean, he would crush. Oh, unbelievable. No, he's a and he was a great guy. Great guy. I mean, he Super hey Scott, hey Scott, you're gonna finish. You, you got uh, You might have to do a couple things for me. Here's the thing. I did WGN Morning News with Pablo, and it's like, hey, well, anybody be seen Pablo? We can't find him. Like, <laughs> <laughs> get ready. <laughs> he asked me to help him with something once, and I out of the blue, I hadn't talked to him for a while, and he's like, I'm working on these uh, things right here. If you could help me out a little bit, and just uh, punch these up, punch, punch these up. You got any ideas? And I'm like, sure. I was thinking you. I'm like, all right. First time I've talked to you in eight months, and I. Fired back a couple of things. He goes, those are brilliant. Absolutely love it. Thank you. And then uh, he goes, but I can't pay you. And I'm like, that's okay. No, I'm serious. I want to, but I can't. And I'm like, okay. So uh, about an hour later, my phone, I get a, 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 a link, a text. Of a, he links something to me. And I click on the link 
And I'm like, it's the most vulgar porn site I've ever seen. And I'm, I'm well-versed. And then a few seconds later, a password. You've got a year's worth. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. He gave, me, he gave me something to jerk off to for a year for writing two jokes. <laughs> you know, it's, it was more legal than any packet she would have sent you. I'll just put it that yeah. way. <laughs> but it's the worst thing in the world, by the way, to masturbate and go and think to yourself, this is because of Pablo. <laughs> yeah. In the world. Get, I've got my tortilla. <laughs> Get your hands on my tortilla. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so That's I want to get into a, a couple of these things. So um, I did Stugat's podcast this week from Levitard and Friends. And uh, uh, the guest, the real guest was actually Bill Walton. So I am Walt Bilton now, according to Bill Walton, his alter ego. Um, <laughs> and I'm halfway through the interview is just talking like this, understanding the sunset, realizing how life and death work together in this age we live in. The bicycling for humanity. He, is, he was talking about bicycling. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know? And we, he kept finding ways to work it. And any time, because we were doing it over Zoom, although it was only an audio podcast, I don't think anybody told that to Bill Walton. But I would say, as I sit there in my grateful dead shower, and he would act out being in the shower, but say nothing. <laughs> like he's just lathering up, getting ready, enjoying it. <laughs> and every time I do something, he'd start to act it out. But halfway through, like maybe not even halfway through, maybe five minutes into oh. the in interview, if that's what you could call it, Stugatz, John Wiener, he barely even talked. And I started trying to steal Bill Walton for this podcast. I'm like, you need to come on. You need to be there with me, Scott, and Holmberg. And Holmberg and me just being you. And we, we triple Walton it. And it, it, like, it was supposed to be a five-minute interview, maybe five to ten-minute segment. It was 40 minutes. And then <laughs> it, it written a bunch of stuff that I didn't want to do either, a, like a draft sketch. They wrote like a Berman and Gruden and all this stuff together. And it was fine. It wasn't bad, but I didn't. I, Stugatz doesn't prepare for guests. You know, he didn't. Stugatz didn't write it. Dan Stancic, uh, he's the one who probably wrote it. Stugatz barely even looked at it. I didn't want to be preparing more for a Stugatz podcast than he did. So I, I didn't even really look at it. But after the Walton stuff, I'm like, this is just going to seem really forced. So I fake half-assed my way through it on purpose, and it actually worked out pretty good because nobody cared about it. Uh, what? And uh, I was just throwing out the lines, almost like I knew they were going to bomb. So it worked out pretty well. But Walton's like, anything for you. We'll make it happen whenever you want. So we will be having Bill Walton on soon. He's oh. probably going to be talking about bicycling. Have you ever talked to Walton, John? No, I haven't. You just said something, though, that sparked the greatest possible uh, local theater idea of all time, which is, uh, a night with Walton where you said that everything you did, he would act out. So the Walton spoken word interpretive <laughs> dance where one Walton talks while another Walton acts out what he's saying in tights. And Leotor, I got a picture <laughs> like a blue Leotor. Yeah. <laughs> and he throws it down to the big man as he traverses the terrain of the Arizona tundra, which is filled with canyons and mountains and goats enjoying the cacti the goat the goat cacti a, a little known representation that very few have had access to in the history of not just mankind but in the entire universe stumbling across flora and fauna but very educated familiar with what is edible and what is not and also what will make you hallucinate <laughs> Oh, I would love it. Well, he acted out. What's this, my little friend? A chuckwalla has joined me on my own. <laughs> Look out for the chupacabra. <laughs> They're everywhere. It's an unbelievable amount of chupacabra. And you were here to witness it with your own two eyes. And have you, you should know this, John and Scott. The only way to get the chupacabra to disappear is the secret words, abracadabra, abracadabra, chupacabra forever. But be careful because if you mispronounce either word, he becomes much larger and a quite a formidable foe. You must then fight the chupacabra. I like the idea because I'm, picture, I'm picturing him in the tights. 
acting all this out in my head. This is working here. <laughs> oh, by the way, Run the from the dead, Chupi Cobra. Sorry. Go. The Grateful Dead shower is a real thing too. That's what, what does that mean? He's There's got no a, water and soap. I it's a I don't it's a shower dedicated is it acid acid uh, rain or something yeah. that comes down <laughs> yeah. from it. It's uh, one thing about that fan base is the lack of showering. Oh, so I know. It's odd that he would have that combination. Well, he also, it was really funny because Stu Gotts has been to three Grateful Dead concerts with him. And Bill oh, no, really? Yes, and Bill didn't remember a single one, but he was trying to <laughs> pretend like he really did remember. So he was just vamping about nothing. He was improvising meaningless it's kind of like Matt Foley is the motivational speaker. You got to get yourself. He's not saying anything, but he's just talking around it. And then they had me come on and remember every single second with Stugatz at the concert. But I'm like, well, how? I'm sure he can't remember from years ago. They're like, this is three concerts in the last year. I was like, really? And Walt actually had said to him at one point, he's, he's, uh, he's like, let me block for you. I'll block for you because they got out of there early. They left the concert. And uh, Stugatz got a text from him, like not realizing they'd even been there together. Were you there? <laughs> that kind of a, like just. I so. remember being in the sea, a sea made out of dogs, floating, being eaten by dolphins. And I don't <laughs> recall Stugatz being. But I do remember a combination of dogs and dolphins known as dog fins, the <laughs> chupacabra's natural enemy. <laughs> Which is uh, the biggest reason that Chupi Cabri left the water and became a land mammal. Yeah, I have to say Chupi Cabri. Chupi Cabri is... But Chupi Cabri because it's more adorable. Than... <laughs> it's I feel like it's been colors. two months. It's been two months since you guys have basically joined fingers and started doing this crazy <laughs> acid Nonsense. drip shit. But let, me, let me say this, Scott. It's, it's hot. It started with... Uh... It's, uh, it started with us. I could be back. I could be back. What, 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 was one, what was one of those? That was one, okay. That was another thing. I got a text from uh, Dennis Miller's guy, and he's like, uh, I, um, "What's his name? I can't even think. I can't even think of his name." Uh, what's uh, Christian? No, no, not Christian. What's uh, the Bernie Sanders? Yeah, Bernie Sanders. Good thing. Oh my God! Are Listen, I right? got trouble. I got troubles, guys. I got. <laughs> Too much time around one. Wait, you can do an impression of a guy whose name you don't know. Oh, that happens constantly. You don't even understand. <laughs> but I was like, I, I, I was like, I don't really have the Bernie impression. It's more of John's impression. Uh, I don't have my, an original take on it. So they're asking me to do, like, can you do some voicemails for us uh, for the podcast? I, I volunteered John. I'm like, absolutely. John would love to do it. Uh, and then I texted you about it, and you're like, "Oh, I thought you were joking." I'm like, "No, he'll, no, you're, 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 you're in. You're gonna do it, Chachi. That'll be fun." Okay, that's easy. Um, Frank, are you telling us that how a lot of people will say, "I'm good with faces, but I'm not good with names." You are good with voices, but not with names. Is that <laughs> oh, I've, done, I, I've said that on stage many times. So like, I can't. Like, I have a mental block when it comes to names. And it's getting worse. And then I start to panic because I can't, th like right there, you guys thought there was no way possible I couldn't remember the name Bernie yeah. Sanders. I had I nothing. talking about Dennis Miller's assistant. I had no, no idea. No, no. no Christian, uh, that's that. Christian Blatt. That's Christian Blatt. I know Christian Blatt. I don't know the impressions <laughs> I do. Hey, you know the guy, uh, older African-American gentleman with the freckles? I think it would go something like this. And that's when they realized Caliendo was on his way out. Dennis Johnson? Dennis Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> Dennis Johnson Miller. That's that's who you're doing? Yeah, that's a uh, I'm he's the guy who does the thing. He's a wonderful president, got the crazy hair, Larry David does <laughs> oh, the oh, 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 let me I'm just gonna a free chicken for everyone. <laughs> Colonel Bernie guy. Sanders. Uh, there's a guy. Yeah, I don't that's that's a first to try to remember the name as you're doing the impression. That's impressive. That's hard. You know, it's it's happening to me more and more, and that's why you're you guys are on the show, and it's not. Please, uh, please. My, my name is Old What's his name, and I approve this message. I've done, <laughs> I've, I've done that more than once. You don't even understand. I'm a, but that's I'm a, Biden. That is. I mean, yeah, Biden. Biden well, yeah. that's where he's at. You know, it's just crazy. That, so the other oh, thing I wanna, before we'll get oh. to that in a second. So the other yeah. thing that. Uh, I only head on. So I did that Shaq 
the, the weirdest thing in the world. So Freddie Prince Jr., uh, I talked to him uh, on Twitter back and forth. And then I said, just text me on my phone. So we're texting back and forth. Uh, this is right after I did the, um, a couple of days after I did the Shaq, Marv Albert, and Charles Barkley thing. That was great. And none, none basketball. None basketball. That? And I felt really good about myself there because I remembered all three names. <laughs> and uh, earlier in the day, I'd gotten a text from Kenny Albert saying, hey, can you give me your email address? Or, your e or I was a DM on Twitter. He's like, can I, you send me an email address or your um, cell phone number? I don't have it. My dad wants to say something to you. And I was like, oh, yes, yes with authority. <laughs> so... As I'm texting Freddie Prinze Jr. about video games and all kinds of stuff, because he's, he's really big into that um, and streaming, and he's got he – Did had, you do a Scooby-Doo impression for him? Uh, yeah, he did a little Fred. Um, yeah. And his wife is, was Daphne, right? Right. Uh, Sarah, Sarah Michelle Geller. So um, I'm texting Freddie Prinze Jr. while I'm sitting by my pool, and Marv Albert texts me, this like this i've been a fan for the longest time back in your <laughs> days uh, on the fox nfl pregame and then i texted back to him i read your text as you yes but you've probably <laughs> been getting that for 30 to 40 years <laughs> thank you so much for being you nothing after that from him so i just got the text from him and that was it but I was, it was such a weird, surreal moment texting Freddie Prinz and getting a text from Marv Albert by my pool. I've never felt so Hollywood uh, awesome. in my life. That is awesome. Yeah. I, I always wonder when somebody with such a distinctive voice like Marv Albert, because everybody always tries an impression or something, what his would sound like. <laughs> like when he, you know, because when everybody tells a story, you would say like, and then my wife said, blah, 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 blah. what does Marv's story sound like when you get him just comfortable? Right. And he's sitting there. That's great. Like, yeah. Because his voice is just so synonymous with Marv Albert. It never deviates from that little. I was, oh, hold on. I was giving you space to do it. I was <laughs> thinking, you're, and then my well, wife says, Marv, it's <laughs> unstoppable to be in such a situation. She's and just then my wife says, Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm says, unstoppable on the inside. Quite a bit, just like me. Yes. Oh, he's in me. So then, to, uh, after that, a couple days after that, I get, uh, I see, uh, well, Shaq. Shaq loved it. Shaq loved it, and it's on. I'm doing his podcast this week with those guys. Oh, it's yeah. Shaq watching it, and then as I come in and I do the czar, the czar of the mumble straighter, he giggles a little <laughs> bit, and then I start doing Charles complaining about the nuds. I got, I gotta be honest with you here, Chuck. And Shaq just starts going. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was, he was so, he was. And this is one of the things I'm going to talk about because Charles was ripping the nuns basically for not playing at a high enough level. But Shaq has that lovable, you know, he's going to come from a different, he's like, you know, they should talk about God and then they basically give their lives to God. And so <laughs> it was one of those things, but they were just taking off and going so, um, having so much fun with it. It was actually exciting to me to watch them watch it. And now yeah. I'm going to do their podcast this week and then uh, plug the crap out of this one, hopefully. Do they have a podcast together? Or is it just Shaq? It's ju it's Shaq, uh, John Kincaid, um, and a couple other guys, uh, Rob Jenner's. Uh, they all do it out of Atlanta, I think. But they're all doing it uh, on Zoom right now. Uh -huh. But it's uh, I did it years ago, and uh, you know it was just an audio thing that I linked into them, and I didn't even think twice about it. But this time, you know, the visual, I'm going to have Joey and Juliet both walk into the room during it so they can talk to Shaq for a sec. You know, <laughs> if, I've got, awesome. I saw Jimmy Kimmel do that with uh, Spider-Man the other day, Tom Holland. So I'm like, if, if Jimmy can do it, Kimmel can do that with Tom Holland, I can do it with the general. <laughs> <laughs> See if we can get you in there for six years. Six years. Oh, yeah. So Scott, there's the a general. game that John made up on his... <laughs> John has the most brilliant impression games. The, <laughs> tell him the premise of the Shaq 
game. Uh, it was Stack Jeopardy, if I remember right. And, and one the, of the categories. categories but the categories sales. were great. Yeah. And one of the categories was Shark Sales, where it was just something he got real excited about because he'd give you a clue. And the answer was, uh, like, what is the general car auto insurance or something like that? It, always, it was a product that he pitched. Yeah, it was a promotion. But we all thought – you didn't explain it to us, so we all thought you were saying <laughs> Shaq sails, like he was going out on a boat. But you were saying Shaq sails. So, yeah, you were just spelling it wrong. But it was – I didn't even know what he was saying, but it was so funny to hear him go, Shaq sails. I'll take Shaq sails for 200. All right, this is what Shaq uses every time Shaq's got a bad back. All right, is John, uh, uh, Scott, did you want to get, a, to get into something about Biden? Was that uh, something that you wanted to say? No, not at this oh. point. Oh, okay. Uh, I, was, no, well, I, can, I, can, I, I have no problem with the tra transition getting right I, into No, 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 that's cool. Um, I did want to ask you, we... Did we talk about that sketch that you wrote about the snacks on air? Uh, as far as what? Oh, Kuiper. Yeah, we talked about it a little bit. Did we? I don't know when we start this podcast Does or Scott not. Want to oh, yeah. talk it's about always. the thing you wrote again? <laughs> yeah, yeah is, that, I do. is that, that what, what you just want? Happened? Do you want to reload that for the people who got in and out of their cars and might have missed <laughs> I, it? I feel like the only we only got half a million people to watch that one. Right. So if you're not part of that. Maybe if you could jump on and see that, you know. No, that was fun. Yeah, hey, it's Toledo, good. cut this part out. Hey, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the initial mention was good, but we'll keep it. We'll keep it. No problem. Oh, uh, whatever. Here, I I want to do. Know, a, Scott, I, that was brilliant. You just have to sell yourself, brother. That's it. So, the the disinfectant thing this week with Trump. I got to get into this quickly uh, because it's just like. When, when he said that, he's, it, to me, it was the most simplistic way of saying something terribly. And I knew what he was trying to say is, why can't, we, why can't we find something? It's so simple on the outside. Why can't we do that on the inside? That kind of a thing. Right. And then he's, you know, people blow it out of proportion. I think they blow it somewhat out of proportion. You should never say it as president, I don't believe, but they went, you know, the media rolled with it even more. But, but don't his, you think he gave, oh, go ahead. But he, his defense is what is indefensible when he said, I was being sarcastic. No, <laughs> it has nothing to do with sar. He's got like, he's got sarcasm confused with, I'm not even sure what, cause he's using it like the Smurfs use the word Smurf. I was sarcasming right there. <laughs> I get, I get, I get weirded out by it because I like he gives, there's two brilliant moments that could be happening here. He says something ridiculous every day. So the media will twist his word. So he can always go, they always twist my words. You know, people say that it's fake news because it is fake news. Every, so every day he gives him a little thing to twist. So when he does actually step in the mud, he can say they're twisting again. It's not bad, but to be, you know, I'm not a defender and I'm certainly not as against Trump as all these other people seem to want to be. I'm kind of in the middle. I think he's done a pretty decent job with quite a lot of things. Uh, and then he's lost me on a ton of stuff. This one was like saying, you know, the delicious center of an Oreo cookie. There's nothing bad about it. Have we tried, have we tried that as a cure? Have we, has anybody thought of maybe <laughs> putting that inside our bodies through the veins? It was just like, you don't think that science over the past 80 years of Lysol being a thing and Clorox being a thing, haven't broken that down in every aspect saying, no, don't ingest it and don't put it in your body because it's all over the can. We've tried this. Don't put it in <laughs> you. It's a terrible idea. Everyone who's done it is dead. By the way, John, do you know who writes really good lines about Oreo cookies? <laughs> <laughs> He's raising his hand was... right now. He's raising his I... squeeze bottle hand that you should not squeeze into your body. Don't put <laughs> the 409. That... Formula 408 for COVID-19, not 409. I think maybe Scott Long got into my brain. There's some sort of osmosis <laughs> and planted the Oreo cookie thing to bring us back to all the great stuff you wrote for you this weekend that you performed <laughs> to a level that was acceptable, but not what Scott had in mind. This yes. is, by the way, Perfect. Scott, you, you brought it up too. This is probably the most impression-filled episode we've done mm -hmm. since... Uh, being remote all the time. 
It's a little harder to right. do, obviously, when we're in the studio. It's harder to do remote, right? Yeah, my impressions have been terrible since we went to Zoom. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you right now. It really has. It's, it's, it's hurt you. It's truly. Yeah, yeah. I'm worried about this. I'm worried that I'm getting too used to Zoom and liking Zoom I like life more. a little bit too much. Um, <laughs> like, I don't want to, other than make it, because I make no money right now. And for me, it's a little different than you, Scott, obviously. But, right. um, well, no. I'm, I'm killing you. You're, you're, you're still, you're fine. But I mean. Contracted employee, it's great. I, oh. There's something I love about not having to go anywhere and just being able to do all this entertainment. Back, and now it's been, I hate to use this word because I hate the way people use it, but it's been normalized in entertainment where I think people will accept it way yeah. more than they would have even two months ago. Like it two makes months you ago. wonder how they're going to do it in the future when they realize this costs $40 to right. produce something people will watch. You know, like that's pretty, like, the, like the Ellen show. Yeah, well, the Ellen show is getting all that heat because she's at her house and she's got a, like, you know, she's showing off. I think that's the only aspect people get upset about is the little class war people get into when you finally do get a look into a celebrity's home. But once they're over that, Chris Hemsworth and Ellen talking on Zoom is the same thing as them sitting on couches together. There's just no audience. And I think that there's a production value thing that you can start seeing. We can make the same amount of money uh, putting this show on and it's going to cost us nothing. Uh, there's, there's a future to this type of thing. I don't know that Zoom will be the answer, but I love this. I think I thought I'd hate it and I absolutely love it. You know what else it does? It makes people listen. There's very rare uh, moments where everybody's talking at once. For you two guys, I still have to do a lot of a sign. But Frank, I mean, did for you agree you, with Dr. Stan? I couldn't hear someone else was uh, talking. No, I just, <laughs> did, I just didn't care. Uh, yeah. Doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. That's what doesn't we did matter. before everyone else came on. That's what we did. We, 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 we weren't hitting consonants very well. And we just can't, it, it, it won't set me this. And it sounds like I'm breaking up, but I'm not. I'm just British. Right. We just get rid of teas. They're, they're, they're totally superfluous. Don't need it. Doesn't matter. The, uh, yeah, I, I just think that the Zoom world is going to be a great thing. On the heels of you guys saying you're not making any money, though, the mental side of somebody, like I'm lucky enough to have a job that, that uh, you know, I got a paycheck every week. Uh, but some lady from the bank called me and she said I, I was, she was talking to me about uh, something with a loan and she wanted to switch this and that. And so we go through my current status and she said, and your employer is, and I said, Hubbard Broadcasting, you do this, blah, blah, blah. And then she said, are you at all worried that your job, this is a question on the questionnaire, uh, your job will go away due to the COVID-19. And I, and I actually said to her, fuck no. <laughs> and then if, and like two seconds later, my brain said, you don't know that. And it just started to wash over me like the whole thing could go away. I can't, predict. and I told her, I said, who can answer that question with any sort of accurate? Right. Like, we don't know what's going to happen in two months. My whole company might fold. So it's a, well, like, here's everybody <laughs> has that. In regards to my job, of course, my calendar just went, you know, like a dry erase board and just boom. But I thought Except for okay, the firefighters that took a, an extra day. Yeah, that was they, they did. That's <laughs> so true. That was a while ago. I was so confident of them. I was so confident. Um, so the summer was going to be, oh, maybe July and August people are going to, and I've had some people get a hold of me about big events. They're like, somebody yesterday, like, we're, we are going to do like 500 people in August at some kind of festival. And I'm like, sure, I'll show up if uh, you give me the, you know, you give me the deposit. I'll definitely show up because I'll take your deposit if the thing doesn't happen. But the other part of it is I had someone cancel in August, my only book date for August. And it was not in Manhattan, New York. It was by Manhattan, Kansas. In the middle of Kansas, it was a smaller like town, a United Way fundraiser. There probably 80,000 people in the whole county. Isn't and they State can't... there? What's that? Isn't that Kansas State? Aren't they in Manhattan? Yeah, Ma Manhattan. And it wasn't in Manhattan. It was like me playing oh. the words. Close. It was a it's suburb close. of Manhattan, yeah. Kansas. So you're thinking... The Bronx, you know, Kansas. Thinking, yeah, it, it's not one of those deals where... You know, you think, oh, well, I'm in flyover country and a lot of people are very angry about being told they have to stay at home. And I figure 
you know, maybe there'll be windows where I can do my thing, but those windows are not opening. They're just not, I've done three Zoom calls now. They're not exactly fat cash, but I'm good at them partially because of this. I, this podcast has helped me be better at Zoom calls. Can I ask you one? When are you going to get good at this? <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm not only learning from this, I'm not trying anything. I think ah. I just peed slightly. <laughs> oh, that was good. <laughs> that one was good. That was that, that was, was well, all that ball was on a T, Scott. We were both sitting there thinking there. I was I was waiting for that sentence to break and Frank broke in before. I was I just glad John deferred to me and let me have it. I wanted a big line after forgetting oh, that was good. earlier. <laughs> I, no, all, for our regular listeners who have always wondered what I'm about to say when I sigh and then don't get them in, I <laughs> have compiled them all and made them into my new act on Zoom. It's genius. And I want to thank everyone, especially you two, for creating it and helping me write it. It's Maybe not you on can Zoom. sigh. Yeah, it's just you can on sigh for Zoom. because Vimeo. It's just on <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> Zoom. Zoom. Oh. Uh, so, yeah. John, well, what, congratulations before we started, before we started, there was another um, thing you were talking about, a, a, a doctor you'd heard. Oh, What's no, it was that. Oh, the thing about the, yeah, the COVID deal. Um, I was just combing through internet stuff this weekend, and uh, I'm Swedish. So for some reason, I get Swedish information. I don't know how that happened. I guess I do, I bring it because up you constantly time. tell people that you're Swedish, and then your oh, phone hears it. it. And it's I'm Facebook. Swedish. I don't know why. It ha Every time I say I'm Swedish, I lift my phone up. But uh, so I, I started to get this this interview of this guy, and I don't know who he was. He might have been like a he was a, a government official in Sweden, and you know, Sweden is uh, the place that didn't do the lockdown. Right. But uh, you know, everybody again, they twist things around and they do all the uh, you know. I know how they twist. They don't ever give the good news. They did cancel schools for high school, college, no large. Uh, you know, uh, gatherings. They did the social distancing. They just said, we're going to keep our economy going. So this European, uh, you know how uh, news in England is always so matter of fact and very, very delicate. And he's talking to him. He said, Sweden's having a very similar time. Are you worried about uh, being irresponsible and the outbreak could come? And then you'll be sorry we didn't take measures much like the UK and the United States. And the guy, <clears throat> like, almost like this uh, just robotic way of saying, he said, uh, um, we did most of the things we were asked to do, but what if there's never a vaccine? Then we'll be sorry. <laughs> and the guys, he said, we're on a 10 year plan, whereas you guys are just trying to fix right now. And the Europeans said, well, of course, you know, you have to take the measures now. He said, our schools will be open next year and we'll have more immunity than anyone, despite deaths, despite problems. And then he went deep into this thing about how in 10 years, we won't have a problem even if you don't, he said, but, and it just dawned on me how we have this almost, uh, I, I guess we feel entitled to a vaccine. It's on the way. We're just right. waiting. It's just, and, and it may not come. And you and know, it really kind of hit me. You know what that's called is herd mentality, right? Yeah. Cow herd and immunity. The, the, the Colin cow herd. Ah! <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> Stockholm. He's, uh, he's, yeah, but they've got this concept and it's, and it's, uh, and it's basically like, don't count on it. If it comes, that's gravy. If not, we'll be ready. What's the matter? I just, in my head, I was realizing it's Sweden and I wish the whole interview had been done as the Swedish chef. Sure. We're in years. We're going to be fine, but you guys are going to be dead. <laughs> well, when, when they did say, we have to welcome the uh, prime minister of Stockholm's uh, mayor of office is here right now. Let's welcome him. And he goes, hey, how are you? He did the big bird <laughs> from Frozen. You just wait for him. The, the second you hear Sweden, you expect the, either the Frozen guy or the Swedish chef, and he was not that. And I think that's why it catches you off guard because you think of these people as dopey Muppets or cartoon characters. He was like stern. It was like, you guys can do whatever you want. We got similar numbers. Doesn't matter. Like, yeah, well, you know, Bernie awful. Bernie Sanders Who? is always touted <laughs> Sweden uh, as the model of what we need to do, and they're showing you why the United States could never do what Sweden does 
Sweden is a bunch of people that are like-minded in thought. Yeah. Our country has got half the people that believe one thing and half the people that believe the other. You cannot do a program like that. It could, no. We could never do what they're doing right now. There's just no way. And Let how alone, densely, do you know how densely they're populated, Scott? They're not densely yeah. populated, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. the thing that he did say too, and he said something similar to that was, we're not a divided country. No, uh, we be we not. believe similar things, and Norway's the same. And Norway did the opposite, and they're, you know, they're they have much less as far as numbers to Sweden, but they're, that's the risk they're taking. They're basically like, we'll we'll take that chance because we know that in a few years, if there's no vaccine, we're going to be in better shape. But with that's with crazy. Sweden and uh, in Norway, do does the people that live there all basically look the same? Do they? Mm -hmm. Right, but that's the thing is they all look the same, have the same. Um, right. culture it's not cultures going back and that's why we have div divisiveness um, from diversity this is frank's moment where he finally says diversity's got to go no <laughs> no look at how lucky that's, they that's, are that's they all funny. look exactly the same no but look there's a reality that. to that that everybody when everybody's when it's a homogenous demographic when everybody's a that's like what they say in in japan too right like in Japan, everybody's Japanese has mostly the same religion. I, How can you even know? And see, it turned out that was a different guy. All I, all I want to say is this, is that I was really happy your audio was cutting out for half of what you said, John. <laughs> oh, did it really? Oh, yeah. Damn it. But my it internet is. speed. <laughs> so what, uh, was your, what was your line, Scott? Yeah, no, uh, Bobby Slayton had that bit. It was 25 years ago where... Every guy from Japan looked like Pete Rose or Mo from the Three yeah. Stooges. That was it. You could keep that one out too, by the way, probably. <laughs> but uh, well, yeah, Bobby Slayton's not allowed in here. Anymore. That's, that's what they're going to be out of that. But the funny thing is, when you when you when you speed up Bobby Slayton, I actually sound like somebody from a 1970s Japanese movie. I think yeah. it's, okay. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. I understand you couldn't hear what I said, so let me repeat it. I said. <laughs> Everyone in Japan looks exactly alike. Last dance. Let's get into it as our last dance in this podcast segue. Material is getting better and better from the Frank Stare. Yeah. Third person acknowledgement. I got everything that makes us sick, John. You just trans transitioned back into you to transition <laughs> into the transition. <laughs> no wonder you love Zoom so much, Frank. It's what exactly you dreamed of. Ah, uh, transitionception. Is that what it was? Ooh, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot the of way, songs I, there. Yeah, e each one, the, the movie and the, the transition made me go to sleep. <laughs> go ahead. Scott, you've been watching The Last Dance, the Michael Jordan documentary? I watched the, I did not see the ones from last night, but you know, I, I know the whole story, basically. So it's, my problem is, is it's really slanted towards Jordan because Jordan has never been involved with anything so people are excited to hear what he says but you know he like lights up isaiah thomas and he Last lights up he did. yeah yeah i get it and isaiah thomas is known as an a-hole they the whole i don't know if they got into the whole dream team and how they tried to kind of uh ghost him most yeah. of them oh they did they did last night yeah but i'm not a bulls like lover like my I loved the Suns in the 90s, and that game made me sick. Oh. Uh, so, and I rooted yeah. for the Pacers. So my, my point of view is it's a worship fest of Michael Jordan, and I love the hard work part. I love his mom at the start basically saying, you know, she told him, hey, don't complain to me. Bust your ass and get the, make the team next year. That kind of stuff was wonderful. But – Michael Michael Jordan's an asshole. He's the asshole. I'm telling Everybody you this right now. I'm telling asshole. you this right now, Scott. You watch him, uncensored Michael Jordan, who is worried about being disliked in this documentary. Yeah. I love him more. It fits with what Dennis Miller and John Holmberg have been telling me all along. Just be okay. yourself. Be the a-hole that you actually are. People will find it entertaining, authentic, and real because everybody inside has a little bit of that assholishness. Yeah. And he's saying yeah. things like... 
when he's saying things, he's like, he's basically saying things like, uh, fuck Isaiah Thomas. He's, yeah. I mean, and you're going, yeah. Yeah. Well, the funny thing is it made me think to myself, where was this guy the whole time? Because the Michael uh, Jordan that I know is an asshole because he was clearly lying to me his entire career. He was putting on the Nike. Oh, yeah. This Michael Jordan is being who I've always wanted him to be, which is a guy who talks like a normal person and acts like a normal person. He's the sell in this. I agree that his reputation is what a jerk. And I can under kind of to a certain extent understand why. But. I'm get, it's authentic. I mean, I'm seeing Michael Jordan comfortably talk about what he feels uh, was kind of the beginning of the end of the, the stupidest moves uh, sports teams ever made. But Jeff, I amazing. don't think, I don't think 20 years ago, this works. I don't think him talking the way he's talking right now works. I think where we're at in society has changed so much that people don't, don't want to see it work. Why, why, why not? I think it would have. I think years ago, we'd have loved to have seen Michael Jordan come out of a shell. It would have been different, but you're, I don't, why would I, I think, think, it I think, I think the one guy who has been the anti Jordan and they were great friends and he was the first athlete to do it. He said in his commercial was Barkley and Barkley has been the template of, I will say whatever I want. And I'm so I'm so committed to it and I'm fun and I'm likable and you will accept stuff that will get other people fired. And Jordan's been the opposite his whole life where he's protected the corporate dollar and right. in a beautiful, masterful way. But it's interesting now, Jordan, I watch Jordan and he might say similar things that Barkley does, but I don't like him. I love Barkley. <laughs> I don't like Jordan. I think you're predisposed to dislike Michael Jordan. Maybe. And I say I in my too. act with Charles Barkley, he went out there years ago and said, I am not a role model. And then he went out and constantly proved it. And right. That, and that, and that's, the Trump, that's the Trump method. I could say whatever I want. You know, it's that. Same it's guy. go out there and be Teflon Don. But I think you're predisposed to Jordan. I, I didn't have a positive or negative. I thought he was – I thought Jordan was doing what I've done most of my career, uh, obviously on a much lower level for me, is gone out there and been milk toast, spelled not M I L K T O A S T, as I once spelled it for uh, John and got uh, berated as though I should not even be on it. On, on, There's a Q in there, right? Yeah, milk wet toast. He crushed me. Uh, and I didn't know. I really didn't know. And um, <laughs> John was the grammar hammer on you, Frank. Uh, just that I didn't. I, you know, it was just so. But I looked as I was spelling it. I'm like, this isn't right. But he, maybe he doesn't know. And and he came back to me. He goes, that's how an idiot would spell it. <laughs> and I was like, I yeah. I I actually thought, think I wrote that's the most milk toast way a, yeah. a rube would spell milk toast. I mean, it was. I, I mean, I felt if I didn't have. Uh, I didn't. If I didn't have John up on a pedestal in my mind, of you'd have hated me. I, I oh, I would have never texted you. I, I've been like it's over, but I need you. So, um, <laughs> but I, I it, Jordan to me is what I have been, and one of the biggest flaws I think for me that's worked in terms of hey this corporate market and all these things. But Mike, this is actually opening my eyes so much to see Michael Jordan saying, uh, you know, these guys fucked up. Just saying this yeah. stuff is like whole uh, they're gonna accept that. It's actually gonna open doors for people to be more real in those markets to go, right. somebody says you can't say that. And they'll be like, well no, Jordan does it. I mean he's yeah. the most corporate well, guy of all time. The amazing part is, though, that he was always selling you something, so I never trusted that anything he gave me was real. It was always a pitch. And after a while, you're like, I don't know what you are. I know you're amazing at basketball, but I know when you talk, it's, you know, man, it, it, man I don't really care because you're not interesting to me. You're not giving me anything real. So then it made him a bigger dick when you did hear about the affairs or the gambling or how he treated people. And it's like, that's not the guy I'm being sold. If this Michael Jordan, this is why I think it would work, Frank, is if this Michael Jordan never tried to sell me things, and granted he has to because of his, you know, relationship with money and his, uh, you know, where he is in the stratosphere of sports, this Michael Jordan would have got, gained my trust with a product because I would have thought to myself, wow, if he's saying it, 
I know it's not BS. I think you're much more of a critical thinker than most people, though. Oh, I, I probably agree with that. But I mean, Charles Barkley, at the, and when Scott brought that up, that's kind of why I said, why don't you think it would work? Charles Barkley was working 30 years ago with this very, I'll but say Charles Barkley was, was crazy. He wasn't he was at different. the level he's at now. Charles Barkley being authentic in the last five to 10 years has taken off as opposed to Charles Barkley being interesting and fun and honest. 15. Yeah, but you didn't, Frank, you didn't live here in Phoenix when he played here. Uh, it was the Charles Barkley show every time he was on TV. He didn't, the, he's the same. I think. Right. Too, oh, yeah, yeah. I, no, yeah. I know that, but I mean, not nationally. Yeah. And when you're a, in a you're local right. market, I think that can take off and be way bigger. I, I think that that can work even locally. You can be the local bad boy. But I don't think people, I don't think the media would prop that up the same way. Look at how much Tiger Woods was brought down. Right. Uh, because he was doing the same thing. He was selling everybody everything. And I'm crystal right. clear, uh, very clean uh, young man. By the way, I'm on Connor Moore's podcast this week, too. I'm doing a lot of, do you know who Connor Moore is? Connor Moore does all the golf impressions. He's really fantastic. He's oh, from right. Ireland. He's re I mean, he nails all, he, he does all these golfers. Yeah. And it was funny to have him. T he's like, they keep calling me the Frank Caliendo of Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never even heard of you. Never heard a word you said. I looked you up. You did some pretty good impressions. Um, <laughs> but it was interesting. We were just kind of going back and forth. And, but, but he does this Tiger Woods. And he's like, nobody had ever done Tiger Woods. I'm like, people had done Tiger Woods, just not that well. And then you do Tiger Woods, or, or nationally, I'm sure. John, I'm guessing you've done Tiger Woods. I have not. Oh, no. I, my, my teeth are too short. But I think that it's, it's basically matching your teeth up and talking to me. But, uh, but, we're just get, but that's the same thing with, um, with Tiger Woods. And Tiger Woods got knocked off the pedestal years, like destroyed for people finding out who he actually was behind. And he's not that much different than Jordan, right? Of all but it was a false. But again, the lesson learned was he built a giant false foundation. But Jordan that, had that too until this point. Well, that's right? what I'm saying, right? So I mean, hearing hearing anyone come out on their own now, yeah, Tiger, that's it. And yeah, that's the difference. If they do it on their own, you're like, look, you know, you guys know I'm a corporate salesman, but I'm also a person. That's different when somebody Dennis Rodman changed his tune from a guy who tried to play the game to go, this isn't me, and he took some heat for it because he's crazy and it I'm came out of nowhere. I'm just gonna do it. get out do it. I'm not gonna do it. He's almost had a Bergeron as a puppet. <laughs> I was watching last night and I'm like, he's got a little Orgeron in there and also like um, Jim Henson, Frank Oz kind of uh, I was thinking Andrew Luck is it that uh, Frank Oz. There's a little Frank Oz or, 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 or when you drink too much orange juice and you get all phlegmy. Yes. And you have to like throw your throat up to talk. Yeah. It's weird though, because I do think if Michael Jordan had sold us this Michael Jordan, he'd have bought 10 years of, ah, well, you know, that's Michael. Tiger Woods, same thing. And the thing that Tiger did that amazes me is he went right back up on the fake pedestal. It took 10 years, but he went right back to, no, I'm a corporate salesman. And okay, I'm gonna, just going, here's my I'm argument. Man. Here's my argument against, I don't think once again, and Tiger Woods is, that's a better example than even Michael Jordan. Tiger Woods is a really smart guy who's empty personally. He has very little to offer you mentally, even though he's a smart guy. He went to Stanford. I'm sure he had a great education. Um, he speaks, you know, well, but his, I don't think he has anything to offer. Like he doesn't have good, interesting takes. I think Jordan is great at telling you know, stories about other guys where he's always the hero in it because, you know, he is the greatest. And he, he tells wants stories to like my wife. She's always. <laughs> 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 well, you're living with her in quarantine. So you can realize that maybe that's not always wanted. So I guess my argument against what you're saying, John, is, is that Charles Barkley is in a wonderful person to listen to. You could listen to him for hours. So when he's authentic and truthful, I think there are people that should not be authentic. Their authentic self, they should, they're battling to keep their authentic self away because they are miserable human beings or empty <laughs> souls or empty vessels. So I would rather hear an empty soul in an empty vessel 
that's uh, because that, Michael Jordan's dangerous thing was, if that's true, and he is not someone, I think authenticity will sell over the fake thing all day long, even if you're worthless, because at least you can't crumble. He was at such a fuck you attitude that he never said anything publicly, not politically, never gave any money to any group where you could say, hey, you know, yeah, he once said, hey, Republicans buy tennis shoes. And that was smart business wise. He was such a F you attitude. He had that Hitler mustache when he was wearing the t-shirt and the V-neck, which I guarantee you that last dance won't cover that. That's the kind of stuff I want to see here. I want to hear that. And, and they were ripping Jerry Krause because Jerry Krause is a fat slob, was a fat slob. But Jerry Krause was 10 times the GM, 10 times the GM that Michael Jordan has ever been at with Charlotte. But that was never discussed either. It's they like, they, they okay. bring him up. Last night, they brought him up in a little better light. He starts looking, yeah. Jerry Krause starts looking better. And they okay. actually start showing, interview, Jordan's interview, they give – uh, phone footage to other people watching Jordan tell stories. Um, and they're like, you can see Scotty Pippen, go, Scotty Pippen going, Oh, I can't believe this. Yeah. Which, okay. So that leads me into what I got John hooked on again. I, I, I actually, John started it last week. He started oh. sending me Scotty Pippen voice um, recording. <laughs> oh my gosh. Is that low? Oh. How do you get there? Oh, it's, you got to dance deep. I said, it's, it's vocal cord limbo. The, the, it is. Like, uh, you're doing the limbo with your vocal cords. Every yeah. Oh, boy and girl. I don't even know if I can do it loud enough. Maybe what? I have the recordings from my. Yeah. yeah can you hear that? Yeah. Although it sounds a little like Sean Connery saying it from the recording. Yeah. Well, that's different. But yeah, we did that until like 11 at night last night, going back and forth on Scotty Pippins, and we realized that it's only really good if you're laying on your back. <laughs> you, you have to rest all of your throat into itself and the epiglottis has to lay sideways for you to even get close to uh to con to being consistent with it but i guarantee you in the next week we'll both have it scott Can did I you hear you mine on twitter pippin? did you hear the one i put up scott no i haven't a pippin now here's the thing somebody it's it's pretty good but here's the thing. Somebody, somebody unlocked what it actually is. Michael Clark Duncan. Yeah. Oh, it is. Mine, yeah. mine sounds more like Michael Clark Duncan. Than okay. Here's how you get Pippin. I'm going to give it's you close. A, I'm not an impressionist. Just go into your inner self and imagine tipping everybody 5% because Scotty <laughs> Pippin is famous yeah. for being the absolute worst tipper in the history of mankind. Look up bad tippers that are nope. famous. He's, the, he's number one. Yeah, the, because his name rhymes with it. Tippin. I know. No Tippin Pippin. Yeah. No Tippin Pippin. That's all it is. I just have Michael on my side the entire time. The funny, hold on. The funniest part is we can barely hear you, but we know yeah. it's there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's you can't do it loud. It's, I, don't think I know. Can. When I did it for Twitter, I, I recorded it. I boosted the sound, turned the um, background noise down, and that's the only way it would work because I could. I, it's like when I started working on Morgan Freeman. When I started doing it, I realized that you just have to be quiet. And then it builds up and gets stronger and stronger. But that one's so deep that it's. If I tried to get louder, it wouldn't come to me as easily as it does. But it's quiet. <laughs> right now, Toledo's it's going, so this is not usable. It's the yeah. It's uh, the Henry Kissinger almost. Well, like your internet got, sounds yeah. fast when you do it, John. Huh? Your internet what, what? sounds fast when you do the. Oh, man. Your internet sounds fast when you do the impression, but I yeah. can't hear a word of it. So that's uh, just telling you right now. All right, we're going to bring in Salehi. He had something he wanted to talk about with the, uh, with the Bulls here and the, the last dance. Um, so we'll do that. I just wanted to ask you guys if you think that, I mean, because my generation has revered LeBron as the greatest player of all time because we never really got to see Michael Jordan. I wanted to ask you all if you think that this kind of has helped give younger generations like myself a better view into how dominant of an athlete 
uh, on the court and off the court, just as a cultural icon, Michael Jordan was. Can I answer that? Yeah. LeBron's incredible. He didn't change the game. That's the difference to me. I think equal footing on a basketball level, LeBron can play with anybody. LeBron would have been just fine in that era of beating the tar out of each other the way they used to play. He's big and he can do it. Uh, but Michael Jordan changed the game completely. The reason there's a zone defense, the reason there's no hand checking, the reason defense has changed all the way across the board, and the reason teams started shooting all the time outside or uh, in the late 90s went out and got a seven foot eight inch guy to just stand in the middle and knock him down was because of Michael Jordan. Magic Johnson and Larry Bird changed the game to a level where Michael Jordan could just extreme. Like the, the, the differences between the game in 84 and 90 are incredible. And the only Scott, way you could keep up was I, to beat I, people up. I, I agree totally with what John says. And I would also throw in, as you've heard, not a big fan personally of Michael <laughs> Jordan, but no one has ever walked the United States land and not been bigger. He had more of a fan base than every city he would go to, there would be like a thousand people outside of his hotel. Like he was, he was all the Beatles in one. And so LeBron is incredibly popular and the most popular athlete of now, but it does not even touch the popularity levels of Michael Jordan. It also probably didn't hurt Michael Jordan that he was based in Chicago the whole time and not Cleveland or Miami. I don't feel like that helped his national base as much. So I would just tell you, Michael Jordan was, you know, the biggest star in America. Only maybe Michael Jackson was that kind of level of popularity. But the difference was Michael Jackson there was a lot of people that didn't like Michael Jackson, whereas Michael Jordan was just, I mean, it was, it was insane. No athlete in my lifetime I've ever seen anywhere close to that level. Let me ask you this. Watching him physically, I thought NBA players all were on the same level of uh, fast twitch muscle as Michael Jordan. I think I, I always feel like athletes are ahead of their time, but I, I watched some of those clips of Jordan on non – high definition and yeah. he looks surreal how quick he is how fast he got up and how high he got and how much he did did seem to just hang and i've seen a lot of nba players nowadays and i thought everybody really caught up to what he was doing i don't no. i don't think so i think he was a, an anomaly i think he was and something consider he was doing that with the rules designed to knock him on the ground I mean, the physicality of the game in the 80s and 90s is – it's a different game. It, today's game is a different game. What the Golden State Warriors did a couple of years ago might be the only type of game that translates today back to the old days. Just nobody can guard a 30-foot three-point shot with physical play. But Here's everybody else is different. Like that, You get into the zone defenses and all that stuff that they got rid of because of Michael. The same with Tiger Woods. Like you brought up Tiger Woods. The, I mean – you know, it's, um, we all know why. It's because a black guy started to dominate a purely white sport, so they just changed all the courses to say we're not going to have this as much as we can. Jack Nicholas is always going to have the records. But they did it to Michael, too, where they're like, all right, uh, it's a little late in his career, but let's just let's get rid of all these defenses. Let's get rid of hand-checking. Let's kill the physicality, which really Michael thrived on. He did, he'd have won in any generation, but he was better than LeBron only in that uh, – he, he, he didn't have what – Scott, when you said he was in Chicago – LeBron yeah. had the tag of next Michael Jordan. Nobody did that to Michael. He had to build no, that. Le LeBron right. got that in Cleveland and nationally ESPN wouldn't leave LeBron alone in high school. So he did have that leg up on the whole thing. We're going to sell this kid no matter where he goes. Where Michael just was, yeah, he's pretty good, but he's going to that cesspool team in Chicago that's never done anything. He had the Aaron Rodgers chip on his shoulder. Yeah. That, yeah. Frank, Frank, that's so true. And that's the po other point I was going to bring up to explain he was the best athlete in the, in the league and he was the one who wanted to beat you the most. I've never seen that in any athlete in any sport. Like, okay, let's say Tom Brady wants to beat you the most, but he's not one of the best athletes. Usually if you're this remarkable athlete, 
you, you'll say, I'm going to rely on my own athletic ability and maybe not work as hard. Well, he had this remarkable athletic ability and he wanted to outwork you too. That's what makes him even more than LeBron. LeBron is a great athlete, but I think there's 10 guys in the league that are as good at athletes as LeBron. He's just got better basketball, basketball instincts and he plays harder. But Michael wanted to rip your throat out. He wanted to rip out his own teammates' throats, like with Steve Kerr, which we'll see later on, I'm sure. And he was an amazing athlete. So that's what makes him just on a whole different level of any sport. Yeah, and I, I agree when you all were talking earlier about how having the uncensored Michael Jordan might actually help him a little bit, just being more kind of out there and more genuine. I, I love it because, again, the only Michael Jordan I've ever seen has been the old commercials, has been Space Jam, has been, has been kind of the, the advertising part of Michael Jordan. I haven't seen a lot of his games or his post-game press conferences or stuff like that. So having this first introduction to the man Michael Jordan, I think, at least for me, has helped me become a larger fan of him because he seems more and more genuine throughout this documentary process. Sean, you should have seen during the 90s trying to do stand-up comedy or anything else live during a Bulls game. Chicago oh. literally oh. shut down and everybody yeah. was just watching the Bulls. That's all. I, that, I've never seen anything like it anywhere. Like nothing else existed when the Bulls were playing. You know, more, the more I think about it, the more uh, maybe it is just our age, Frank, that we grew up with this Michael Jordan on a pedestal thing. It reminds me, it did, as we were talking about it, it reminded me of the time that my sweet, sweet grandpa called a cop a prick in front of me. Yeah. And I mean, this guy was unbelievable and he was the sweetest man in the world and I never knew. And this cop said something to him and he goes, ah, you're a prick. And he drove off and he looked at me and he's like, you're an adult now, you can deal with that. And I was like eight. <laughs> but it was this it was the first introduction of like, oh my God, he's a person. I had the same I had the same moment with my grandpa, Grandpa Caliendo, <laughs> Uncle Phil's dad. Um we were at Chuck E. Cheese. I was playing a video game. I had some credits left in the it was probably Popeye or something there, Galaga. I had a credit or two left. I walked away, another guy stepped in started to play it, I think innocently, didn't realize I was still playing it. I was like, hey, I'm playing it. The guy's like, well, I stepped in here. I'm playing it now. And my grandpa grabbed him by the <laughs> face and said, don't fuck with my grandson. You know, it's that like, I'm not like a Sopranos not, moment, right? It, change, uh -huh. it changes everything though. Cause when my grandpa did it, I was like, oh, and I talked to my uncle and he's like, my dad is a cantankerous mean man. And I'm like, Papa? No, he's not. He's the sweetest guy in the world. He gives me money every time I see him. But then you started to see the real him. And it's kind of that Michael Jordan, almost refreshing. Oh, good. You're a person. You're not always a corporate shell. And that, that's why I think I'm really resonating. Let me explain something to you, John. I'm pretty yeah. sure you can Google my grandpa, an Italian from Chicago, and a lot of yeah. stuff's going to come up. All right. Really? Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure. That's all right, so like, Did not you not have any other, uh, do you have any other references? Uh, no, actually, we kept it kind of within my realm today. Uh, Swedish to Chef? You know Swedish Chef? Yeah. Gilbert yeah. Gottfried? Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. Gilbert Gottfried, I feel like you can't not know him just from his voice. I mean, like... You, you have flag. To, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I know Gilbert Gottfried, Swedish Chef. Uh, Michael Clark Duncan, at first I was like, who's that name? And then I, I, when I looked him up, I recognized him. Uh, You're not supposed to look things up. Well, I mean, I, I recognized who he was instantly because I've, I've heard the name, but I recognized it instantly. Did you really? Yes. Believe it or not, one the first uh, thing that came in my mind was a cameo he had in The Dark Knight. He played the prisoner on one of the two boats oh, yeah. that bombed, and he was holding the detonator and threw it out the window. That was the very – that's the first thing. That and then uh, his role in Green Mile. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> John could just be doing that under his breath the whole time. Scott, did you have something else you wanted to add? Well, just this whole coronavirus and being stuck in the house and losing my job. I just wish, uh, is it, I never got his name right. Is it Elon Gold? No, I know. Was it Elon Gold or Elon Gold? How, Elon how Gold. Okay. He told me that, you know, he told us that he could do 
this great uh, impression of one of the characters from Pulp Fiction. And every time someone asks me, because they know things aren't going well, they're like, uh, is everything going okay? And I always feel like, no, Butch, I'm pretty fucking far from okay. <laughs> the whole time, I wish I could do that impression, because that's where I feel. I feel like that is the theme of this particular uh, situation. I'm so pretty you feel fucking far oh. from okay. It sounded like you said Fark and Far, so I thought you were doing the uh, the you Johnny like, Dangerously. Uh, yeah, the, the TBS version of Pulp Fiction when it airs on Saturday nights with. Yes, that's that what it was. That's hey, Salehi, Johnny Dangerously, you know what it is? No, that one. Not up, you Fark and Ice Pick. It's yeah. Fark terrible. Is what it is. No, no, it made me laugh. I will say, oh. when I was I was his age or younger. Michael Keaton vehicle from the early '80s. Mm. All Joe right. Terrible. Well, it looks like uh, we should be uh, we should have Ed Milet later this week. Uh, one of the richest guys uh, under fifty years old, uh, by according to Forbes. That should be at least this probably this week um, if his internet's working. <laughs> uh, and hopefully Harlan. Coburn. Is it all the rich guys that have bad internet? Uh, because the poor guy, I feel like my internet's pretty good. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> the college kid's working pretty good too. Can you prove yeah. that? Can you back that up with numbers, boys? Oh, don't brag, Sean. This is where you get wasted. <laughs> That's oh, true. I'm telling you, you don't want to fool around with this kind of... <sighs> Boom! <laughs> oh, I'm going to speed test. John, that. I feel like that's your 4G. That's not your house internet. Yeah. I'm, where else can I get it? It's my house. It's not on my phone. What are you my speed testing is, on? By the way, my house is 5G anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you and your 4g what are you doing speedtest.net uh, I, I got a couple of them which one which one do you need because both of them are awesome i don't know which one you oh, i got it speed test That's i got speedtest.net. Uh, it was a little lower than that i don't like the 140s i was happier at 160 stuff this oh, is going to be slow there we go yeah look at that boom shazinga let's get shazinga done. that's right Made up a word for that chupacabra chupacabra all right Great job, everybody. And that's the show for today. Rack them.